All right, we're going to take a quick look at area between curves. Um, now, this is a subject you're going to revisit in more detail in uh, a later chapter, the chapter on applications of integration, if you move on to Calculus 2. Uh, but we'll do a little bit of it here in Calc 1 just to make sure that we, you know, have some examples of things that we might use integration for. Uh, we're going to talk about average value um, in, in a bit, and that's going to be one other application of derivatives that we'll see early on. Uh, further applications are going to have to wait until your second semester of calculus. Now, here's sort of the scenario, right? We've got this region, and we can kind of fairly clearly see the region here, right? Bounded by the two curves, f of x and g of x, right? We've got this region in between here. Okay. We want to compute the area. Now, there's a few ways of, of thinking about this. One is to realize that, okay, as, as I'm drawing it, um, this area is going to be, well, it's the area between the curve which is on top, f of x, so between f of x and the x-axis, okay, meaning this whole area here going up, across, down, right, that big area, minus the area between y equals g of x and the x-axis, right? So we only want the area in between, so if we have this big area, we need to take away the area underneath. Okay, but we know how to compute these areas, right? These are just definite integrals. So that means this area, it's just the integral from a to b of f of x minus the integral from a to b of g of x, right? Or if you like, you can even combine this as a single integral, f of x minus g of x, okay? The important thing here is that you're always doing the upper curve minus the lower curve when you're doing area between curves, right? Top minus bottom. It's going to give you the area between the curves. Now, I've drawn it so that the curves actually intersect and we kind of have this clearly defined area. In some problems, maybe you don't have those points of intersection or maybe you're given these limits, right? You're told that well, A is here and B is here and you have those vertical lines and it's still the same idea, right? The area between the two lines, below here, above there, you still have that region. The integral is still given by the same formula. Um, if you aren't given those bounds, if you're not given A and B, well then you do have to pay attention and you almost certainly want to draw the region that you're finding the area of, because one of the things you're going to have to be aware of is finding those points, right? Finding those points of intersection. If, you, if you're just told find the area between F and G, and you're not told where, where is F, where is G, well then you've got to figure that out. Figure out where they intersect, because that's going to give you those limits of integration. Um, one other note, I've drawn this with both curves above the x-axis, but we could have one above, one below, we could have both of them below, we could have them above for a little while and then below later on. Doesn't matter, formula is always going to be the same, upper minus lower, right? Doesn't matter how the curves are oriented. Another way that you could think about this, if you don't want to think in terms of, of this kind of general area problem, you could set this up in terms of Riemann sums, right? In terms of Riemann integrals. Um, so if you think about taking this area and dividing it up into areas of rectangles, you can think about, well, how would I, how would I calculate the area of these rectangles, right? Each rectangle is going to have a width of delta x, and the height of the rectangle, well, it's going to be the different distance between this point and that point. But that's just f at some point minus g at that same point, right? So you could make sort of that Riemann sum argument if you want to come up with that formula. Uh, there's a number of ways to realize that this is the way to do it, okay? So we're going to look at one example so we see how this works. You can try a few more for practice. And in your second course in calculus, you're going to look at this in more detail. But for now, we'll just do one simple example so you get a feel for how it works.